mountains with singing, worship at the throne of God, come into the holy of holies, enter by the blood of the Lamb, come into his presence with singing, worship at the throne of God, let us sing. church. Good it's good to see you all on this third Sunday of Easter. We welcome those of you who are visitors and old friends as well. We welcome those who have no church home, need strength, want to follow Christ, have doubts, or do not believe. Welcome to grandparents, mothers, fathers, and single people. Welcome to people of all colors, cultures, abilities, sexual orientations, gender identities, and gender expressions. Welcome to old and young, to believers and questioners, and to questioning believers. Welcome to everyone, no matter who you are, whom you love, or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We hope that you find this time of worship to lift up your spirit. Before we begin this morning, I'd like to offer a couple of announcements. First, by thanking those who are assisting me in leading our service today, for our reader and deacon, John, and for Darren, also serving as one of our deacons today, for our music led by our choir and Nari, and for our video work handled by Brian. We are also grateful to have our deacons hosting today's coffee hour. So you are all invited to stick around after the service down in Fellowship Hall. Also, after the service, we have scheduled a music committee meeting that will happen in the music room. Tomorrow night is a meeting of Amica, and if you would like to join the group, there's a sign-up form in the back of the sanctuary. You could put your name on there, on there as you're heading down to get coffee or heading out the back door, and be sure to join the group tomorrow night. Also, tomorrow is Patriot's Day, so the church office will be closed. And if you need to come into the church office, please reach out to Joy in the office as her hours in the office will be a little bit different this vacation week. And now I invite you all as you are able to stand as we offer our call to worship as it is printed. Call to worship. God has set apart those who are faithful. Our Creator will hear us when we call. God puts gladness in our hearts and minds. We will lie down in safety and sleep in peace. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. We are here to remember Jesus Christ. We want to be like the one who lived by love. Our faith strengthens us for each day's living. God empowers our ministries of caring. We trust God whose children we are. We look forward to what God will reveal to us. Now, please join me in the unison prayer of invocation. God of our ancestors, author of life, source of Easter good news, we are drawn together again by the mystery of life and death. We call on you, so far beyond our knowing, with a mixture of faith and doubt. Let your foot shine on us as we put our trust in you. Draw together the fragments of our busy lives around the central core of love which you provide, that we might relate to one another as whole people. Grant us a fuller sense of what is right and good, and help us to live our best. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is from the Red Pilgrim Hymnal, number 185, Come Ye Faithful, Raise the Strain.
seated. In his preaching, the disciple Peter reminded his listeners that no one can escape the collective guilt that allows innocent people to suffer. The mob action that sent Jesus to the cross was fed by fears and anger that we are reluctant to claim. Yet we too reject the Holy One by our neglect, if not by deliberate intent. Peter invites us to repent and to turn to God that our sins may be wiped away. Please join me in offering our unison prayer. We are disturbed and distressed, O God, by the evils that surround us. It is hard to view many people we see as your children, murderers, abusers, those who cheat others and profit at their expense. We feel like victims. Why should we confess our sins when there is so much evil beyond our influence? Yet we know we do not abide in your love. We sin by turning away from sisters and brothers who are also beloved by you, however they may differ from us. We seek the forgiveness you promise and the health you offer. Amen. Friends, hear this good news. Forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to all who repent and seek new life in Christ. The peace of God dwells in us when we honestly examine ourselves, exposing our wounds to love's healing and our self-deceit to love's correction. Beloved, we are accepted by God, whose will for us is a joyous freedom in Christ Jesus. gracious in giving us peace. Let us be gracious in our sharing of a word of peace with one another. children to join me up front for this morning's children's message. All right. Oh, now that's quick, too. We're just all kinds of quick today. All right. So today in church, we're learning a story about when Jesus appeared to his disciples. It was after he died and had been resurrected. And it was three days later since the last time he ate now have any of you gone three days without food that's a long time isn't it have you gone one day without food that'd be a long time wouldn't it be have you gone one hour without food you have okay all right so you can last an hour maybe a couple hours you might get a little hungry certainly a whole day you'd be pretty hungry well jesus went three days without food and he came to his disciples and said, do you have anything to eat? Now, if you went three days without food, what would you ask for? What kind of food would you want to have? A donut. A donut. <laughs> a, feast, a feastable? Okay. And Judy, what's your favorite food? Food. Food. Noodles. Oh, yeah. Okay. Noodles are good. 
I think I would go in the noodle family, I would go mac and cheese. Yeah, that's my favorite as well. Well, Jesus wasn't given noodles or mac and cheese or a feastable or a donut or a lunchable. No, <laughs> Jesus was given a fish. I like fish too, so I'm, I'm on board with that. But Jesus probably ate a lot of fish because he, he would he palled around with people who did fishing for a living. So I imagine they had lots and lots of fish. And Jesus had this wonderful meal of fish with his disciples. Now that was really wonderful for him to do because um, sometimes when we want to be friends with people, a great way to do that is to share meals with them. Whether we're eating donuts or noodles or anything else, it's a great way that we could share our lives with people and tell them, tell them that we love them. And that's exactly what Jesus did when he shared this meal with his disciples. He was telling them, I love you still, just as you are, and I want to have a meal with you. Now, we can share our food with other people, and that does the same thing for them. It can share a word of love. So if you've got donuts, you can share your donuts. If you've got noodles, you can share your noodles. Just like your family says, I love you, by sharing their noodles, you can share what you've got with other people. And it's the way we say that we love them. We have a food pantry here at our church that gives food to people who don't have enough. That's the way we say we love them. Right after church, we're going to go down and have coffee hour together. And there's going to, I don't know if there's going to be donuts or noodles, but there will be some tasty things down there. And that's a way we share love with one another. We have these meals together. So let us be like Jesus and continue to share meals with our friends, whether it's fish or noodles or donuts or anything else. Let's pray. God, we thank you for giving us such tasty things to eat in this world and for people that you've given to us to share meals with. Help us to do all that we can to have meals together as a church and to share what we have with those in need around us. We pray this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right, and today you all are staying put with your families here in the sanctuary. All right, so you may head back. Today's first scripture reading is from the New Testament, Book of Acts, chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. When Peter saw a crowd gathering in the temple after he healed a man who could not walk, he addressed the people. Fellow Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety we had made him walk. The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, His name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, brothers and sisters, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Thank you, John. And our gospel lesson today comes to us from Luke chapter 24. While Jesus' disciples were talking about him, appearing to two other followers as they traveled to Emmaus, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. 
He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Yet for all their joy, they were still disbelieving and wondering. And he said to them, Have you anything to eat here? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead, and on the third day, that the repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all generations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. These words are breathed into us by the Holy Spirit.
So how is everybody today? Doing well, I hope. And how is everybody today? I hope also doing well. But my guess is that some of us would answer these two questions a little differently. That we oftentimes claim to be generally okay, but we know our bodies often don't cooperate. And sometimes they are actively at work against us. Well, many of us also are indeed well in both body and spirit. And however it is that you are doing right now, I hope that you leave here this morning doing a bit better. For I hope that you can identify today and in all of this Easter season's messages about resurrection life, something that helps you to witness to God's resurrection power at work in your own body and spirit. Working miracles of healing and growth that would lead you to have a better sense of well-being as a person. You may be thinking in this moment that the best way to have a greater sense of well-being would be for you to take a rejuvenating sermon-length power nap. For those of you, however, who are able to stay awake a little bit as the preacher drones on, I hope you would consider with me just for a few minutes about our scripture lessons for today and the messages that God has for us in them about resurrection life at work. Our gospel lesson today comes from the final chapter of Luke. And you, have made us, you may have noticed, as we read, some distinct differences from the final words of Mark's gospel that we heard on Easter Sunday, which ended rather abruptly with three of the women who were Jesus' followers seeing his tomb, but not his body in there, rather just an angelic messenger who told them that he had risen and then fleeing from the tomb in terror and amazement, they said nothing to anyone because they were filled with great fear. Well, according to Luke's gospel, which we heard moments ago, the women named Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary mother of James and others were not silenced by fear but went to the other disciples to tell them what they had witnessed at the tomb, which included not one, but two angelic messengers, proclaiming to them that Jesus had risen. Luke records that Peter then ran to the tomb and also saw that it was empty, and also that two other followers of Jesus had an encounter with the risen Christ as they traveled the road that went from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And it was on that Sunday night when the disciples were all gathered together again in Jerusalem that Jesus appeared to them all, standing among them and offering a word of peace. Well, understandably, they were terrified, thinking that they were seeing a disembodied ghost appearing before them. But Jesus showed them his very real resurrection body, still marked by the nails that once fastened his hands and feet to a Roman cross. And Jesus invited them to not only see this body, but to touch it, and then to serve his transformed but real body's need by offering him some food. In these moments, the first disciples witnessed in their bodies, with their own senses, the resurrected Christ. They saw him as he appeared in their midst. They heard him offering a word of peace. They touched the still present marks of his crucifixion on his hands and feet. 
They tasted and smelled the meal of fish that they shared. And the gospel ends with the disciples sensing with their own bodies the good news of Christ's resurrection as they experienced for themselves the very real presence of Christ's body. But this gospel actually does not end there. The story at the end of Luke is not an ending at all. In fact, it is right in the middle of Luke's two-volume work about the good news coming to the world. We read earlier from the second volume of this work called The Acts of the Apostles, which is a book about how the good work of Christ continued after his resurrection in the bodies of the disciples. Acts tells stories about how God worked through Jesus' followers to carry on his work of healing and teaching and calling people to turn from their destructive ways. And we heard in today's lesson from Acts, Peter teaching and calling for repentance after he had healed a man in Jesus' name who had been unable to walk. The result of this healing and Peter's bold speech after it was not rejoicing, except by the person who had been healed, who responded by leaping and praising God, but with Peter's arrest. The book of Acts goes on to tell about many other amazing deeds of the disciples and how time and time again the response to their life-giving work was for some joy and faith, but for many others the response was rejection and hostility. Still, they carried on Christ's work. Just as Christ did, undaunted by wounds, unhindered by danger, they traveled with their own wounded feet throughout the empire to tell people in lands near and far about the gospel of Christ. And they worked with their own scarred hands and feet to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and lift up the orphan and widow. Through the work of their own bodies, those first followers of Jesus effectively witnessed to the resurrection and blessed many. And we, followers of Christ of this generation, we continue their work. We use our own bodies to witness to the resurrection. Like the first followers, we can experience with our own bodies the resurrected Christ's presence. With our own senses, we can recognize God at work through us and in us. When we gather and hear and heed God's still speaking voice coming to us through scripture and song, when we see and rejoice for the miracles of new life sprouting and blossoming all around us, when we graciously offer and receive peace-giving handshakes, hugs, and fist bumps, when from our own abundance we share gifts of food with others. We keep Christ embodied, and we do his work of blessing every body. Yes, with our bodily senses, we witness Christ's resurrection power, and with the work of our own bodies for the good of others, we are witnesses to that life-giving, renewing energy in the world. So today, dear friends, do not be frozen in fear for the many dangers of this world, and do not be without hope that God can work miracles of new life among us, for God's miraculous power is still at work in each of us, in the life we share as a community, and in the lives of people throughout the world. Do not feel that the wounds you have received in this life that perhaps may cause you to hurt in body or spirit even now, that these are greater than God, for they are not. 
God who works spectacular miracles with and through wounded hands and feet. And today and always, may the peace of Christ be with you. May peace be in your own body, and may you use your body to offer the blessing of peace to others. As you do so, may you be blessed. May you be well. Amen. And we respond to God's calling to us to be the living body of Christ in the world with our second hymn, I Greet You, Sure Redeemer, which is number 251 in the Black Hymnal. I invite you to stand as you are able. together our unison affirmation of faith, which is based on a song of faith by the United Church of Canada, which is a close friend of ours and a church with whom we are in full communion. Let us offer together then our shared affirmation. This Easter season, we rejoice that death is not the last word. God raised Jesus from death turning sorrow into joy, despair into hope. 
the risen Christ lives today, is present to us, and is the source of our hope. In response to who Jesus was and to all he did and taught, to his life, his death, and resurrection, and to his continuing presence with us through the Spirit, we celebrate him as the Word made flesh, the one in whom God and humanity are perfectly joined, the transformation of our lives, the Christ. We sing of a church seeking to continue the story of Jesus by embodying Christ's presence in the world. We are called together by Christ as a community of broken but hopeful believers, loving what he loved, living what he taught, striving to be faithful servants of God in our time and place, even as we look and hope for a new heaven and new earth. Please be seated. And we seek God's work of creating anew, a heaven and an earth that is new, and bodies that are new, spirits that are new, all that is made new. We pray for those who need renewal in their hearts today. And I ask for you to be keeping in prayer Susan Z, who is with us today as she grieves the loss of her daughter, Brianna, whom we have been praying for. We ask for God's peace to be with Susan and her family as they grieve. Also, please be keeping in prayer Richard O, who cannot be with us again this week as he is recovering from a very bad fall, where he broke one of his vertebrae and suffered a concussion as well. So please keep Richard in prayer. We ask for God's blessing to be with all of our marathon runners who are descending upon the Boston area and will be running into town tomorrow. And I have a very special um, prayer of thanksgiving that I am offering in that on Saturday, I will be officiating the wedding right here of dear friends of mine, David and Andre, who are coming up from uh, the town I used to um, live in in Connecticut or in that area to be here and to celebrate their union of love together. Does anybody else have a joy or a concern today? I have a couple. First, uh, for a longtime friend, David Grant uh, and his family, who lost, he lost his father this week. Uh, without information, some prayers for Dawn, who has some issues. And for Dawn's grandson, uh, Jacoby, who left yesterday, he's 15 years old. He left yesterday with a group to go to Guatemala to do community work. Uh, the group he goes with is called Partners in Development. And he's going to be there for a week. On school vacation, he's going to work for others. So bless them and their group as they travel and safe journey back. And prayers for the two people who are missing who are not feeling well today, Andrew and also Karen. Andrew messed up his back. And does anybody else have a joy or concern today? I invite you to join with me in a spirit of prayer. Holy God, we come before you today in prayer, lifting to you our joys and concerns, the hopes and dreams of our lives. We also open ourselves to your still speaking voice that we may see with new eyes and hear with new ears the direction you will have us go today. When we are blinded by anger, you pour out your love for all to see. When we wonder what tomorrow will bring, you call us to trust in you. When sadness fills our hearts, you plant gladness within us. O God of Easter, touch us now with your grace. You show us your hands so that we may reach out to mend the broken 
you show us your feet so that we may walk with those the world passes by. You show us your face so that we may know who our sisters and our brothers look like. O risen Christ, touch us now with your compassion. You open our eyes so that we may see your perfect love. You open our minds so we may welcome your living word. You open our lips so we may be faithful witnesses. O spirit of hope, touch us now with your peace. Blessed we pray this gathering of your people that with your grace, compassion, and peace, we may grow and flourish in love for the purpose to which you have called us. And hear our prayers now for those who have touched us, those who are in pain, those who are ill, and those who grieve. We pray also, O oh God, for the leaders of the world, that they may be sensitive to injustice wherever injustice happens. Increase our leaders' wisdom so that governments would be better redress wrongs and work toward the creation of more just societies. And we pray for well-being for those who survive only through the active care of others, those who are very young and very old, those who are hospitalized and those who are living with chronic illness. May your loving presence give them and those who care for them hope and strength to endure whatever they may face on life's winding journey. Guide us, O God, bless us, uplift us, for we are all your children. Hear these prayers this day and all those unspoken ones we carry in our hearts. We ask all these things in the name of the risen Christ, as together we offer his prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. With gladness in our hearts, we offer our best to God in this act of commitment and sacrifice in our offering. We give because repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in the name of Jesus Christ to all nations, beginning right here where we are. And so let us give to further the gospel. Let us give according to our faith. This morning's offering will now be received.
and prayer of dedication. We give with joy, gracious God, for you have been with us even when we were unfaithful. You've kept us in safety through times of grave distress. We can call on you in all times and places, in life and in death, knowing that your strength is available to sustain us. We give now that your church may be empowered in the proclamation of good news, in the transformation of human life. Amen. And our final hymn this morning, The Strife is Or, is found in the Black New Century Hymnal, number 242. <laughs>
friends, we as God's children in the first congregational stonum have come together to grow in our faith in Jesus Christ. Through our worship, in times of teaching, nurturing, forgiving, accepting, and serving, we share God's love and joy with each other. So let us go now out into the world to share God's love and joy with our community. Now, as you go and serve, may God, who is your creator, may Christ, who is your redeemer, and may the Holy Spirit, who sustains you, go with you and give you peace and joy. Amen. <laughs>